everyone. I am Mecha Random 42, your favorite YouTube harpy. I was all set today to kind of make this video about how Endgame was was dropped yesterday to distract us from the Captain Marvel controversies. And then this news happened to distract us from Endgame, distracting us from the Marvel or from Captain Marvel sort of controversies. This is this is crazy. This is this is like entertainment. This is like the this is like so this is more entertaining than the movies to me, I think. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Marvel didn't pursue any replacement for director James Gunn. So, big story today. James Gunn is back on board to direct Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 after being fired. But was he fired? Was he even fired? There's all this this news coming out of was he even fired at all? The news that Gunn has been rehired by Disney for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 has Marvel fans celebrating like crazy right now, as their worst nightmare about the Marvel Cinematic Universe has now been averted. The fallout from Gunn's rehiring is still rolling over the internet, but there's already one detail from the initial report on the matter that bears focus on the discussion. Apparently, Marvel Studios never seriously pursued any other director for Guardians 3. That is kind of one of the things that I have been hearing. We've never even heard of, you know, we, we had rumors of, well, maybe Taika Waititi will take over. No, they were never actually interviewing anybody. They're just like, yeah, just cancel it. Fire him, fire him. Let the people think that, that we're firing him. See, this is, this is one of the things with Disney in particular, why I kind of call them out for being like an evil company. In my opinion, in my opinion, because they, they do little things like they think so little of their audience that they're going to be like, oh, well, Captain Marvel controversy with all the empty seats and everything. Oh, throw them some Guardians of the Galaxy news. They like that one. They like James Gunn. They were a little pissed about that. Oh, but what about the people who said he's a pedo? And eh, you're, you're, you're stupid. You won't remember that. That's what Disney thinks of you. Not what I think. At least that's what I think Disney thinks of you, right? That they kind of think we're, we're stupid, that we're going to forget all of this drama. It's like, no, you went out your way to fire the guy because of the Twitter outrage mobs and stuff. And and here, here's the thing. I, I was not covering a lot of this stuff when, um, when this news came out with Guardians of the Galaxy volume three and the James Gunn stuff. I was still kind of, I was still a vlogging YouTuber or no, I was still a gaming YouTuber before I switched over to vlogging. So, or it was like the very early days of it. So I didn't actually get to cover a lot of the James Gunn news. At least I don't think I did, or it might've been too focused on Star Trek or something. This is super duper interesting to me that like they, they, they're, that the, the Captain Marvel stuff is so bad that they're using that to kind of distract, to they're using James Gunn to distract <laughs> again. If you don't think that these people are like calculated about when they drop news, when they release movies, how they release movies, they are super calculated, very skilled, very they're they're sneaky, they're very calculated about what they do. So, ah, oh, Lord, see, here's the breakdown by THR. That's the Hollywood Reporter. In the weeks after firing Gun, there was speculation around town about who could replace the filmmaker with agents lining up clients. But by midfall, any perceived search seemed to have petered out, with many thinking the project was on the back burner. What, had, what almost no one knew was that Marvel and Disney never undertaken, had never undertaken a search and gone back to gun and made a deal in secret, according to insiders. That's so odd. That is so odd. So, so it goes on about, um, and, and this, this does, to their credit, they do kind of give both sides of it. In the interest of proper journalism, it should be noted that deadlines break down in the situation, takes a different slant. Yes, yeah, it does. Deadline saying another thing. Props to comicbook.com for actually doing a decent job. Maybe this person's a little better than the one I usually read their articles from. But, you know, and then we have another one, Guardians of the Galaxy director, James Gunn, breaking the silence on Disney's rehiring. So the entire indus entertainment industry broke out in a collective cry of joy on Friday as a reported, as a reported revealed... As, oh, as a report revealed, reading, reading, me, try and read better, that Walt Disney Studios and Marvel had reversed their decision to fire James Gunn. Okay, so they just reversed their decision now instead of rehiring. They just said, yeah, we changed our minds. It's all, it's all technicality. It's all, it's all semantics, right? And he's back for Guardians 3 since his last fire, since his firing last July. Yeah, that was like right, right as I had changed my channel over from, um, from video games to to this, to, to talking about entertainment news, right? <sighs> so, 
So he, he says, I'm a tremendously grateful, I am tremendously grateful to every person out there who has supported me over the past few months. Gunn wrote in a note that was shared to Twitter. I am always learning and will continue to work at being the best human being I can be. I deeply appreciate Disney's decision and I am excited to continue making films that investigate the ties of love that bind us all. I have been and continue to be incredibly humble by your love and support from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Love you to all. So that's, that's a quote from James Gunn directly. Here's the thing. We're, we're getting into the Captain Marvel stuff. You see, you see all the stuff, all the, all the little extra tabs opened up here. Here's the thing with James Gunn, right? Th this, I, I have to, I have to give my little, little commentary and I know I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people, but just like with the Vic Mignogna situation, there's no police reports. There's no victims. There's, there's no actual, I mean, there, there's more, there's more reports of people who, you know, like I, I know a person who knows a person with Vic Mignogna with the whole anime gate stuff than with James Gunn ever actually doing anything inappropriate, you know, he, he, and I can't say one way or another. I'm just saying I never saw any proof of it myself. What I do, what I am seeing proof of and many times over is that Disney and studios will use every trick in the book, every advantage and whether this legal or not, for the most part, I think most of the stuff they're doing is legal. Like they're going out of their way to make sure that Captain Marvel debuts with nothing, with nothing like opposing it. Then they're doing this type of stuff. They're using all these little tactics to distract us from it. Data Racer, got a shout out to him, also has been digging up some awesome things about box office. Like, like the, the Summon China welcome MPA's audit of the Chinese box office. Studios have lied about box office numbers before, he says. Paramount and Fox got called out about it in 2014 and 2002. So this is the 2017 article. This is from 2014. From Deadline, box office Transformers controversy erupts as Paramount stakes claim to the 100 million three-day gross. No one's buying it. We, we've seen this type of stuff before, right? We, we're seeing all of these things, and, and they're dropping the news about James Gunn right after the, the Avengers trailer. You're trying to distract us from Captain Marvel's empty seats. Now, of course, this is bounding into comics. They're actually one of the good sites. They're they're one of the good sites. They tell they they kind of let people know, hey, there there's a little bit more to this than than they're letting you know. New reports on empty theaters at Captain Marvel to add to the movie's controversy. And I would I would add rehiring James Gunn, dropping the Endgame trailer. I I would add all of these things as as, you know, distraction from the whole Captain Marvel stuff because they know opening weekend is all that counts, right? They know that opening weekend, those numbers are all that count. They know that because of that whole Disney Fox merger being finalized this week, that they need their stock prices as high as they possibly can be. That is part of why they're doing what they're doing, I think. And thank you for subscribing. I forgot to turn off my notifications again because we were live last night. I'll probably do a live stream later today. <sighs> so... New reports of empty theaters for Captain Marvel's weekend showings are the latest in the movie's ongoing controversy. Again, like so much of this stuff, a number of Twitter users indicated there were empty seats at a number of Captain Marvel showings over the weekend. Yes, the Captain Marvel report from my local theater is shocking. Out of 22 showings on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they were greater than 570 empty seats from advanced ticket buyers who never showed up. On Sunday, there were only four no-shows for the movie all day. And then of course they've tagged DJ Cobra, which is Jeremy Geeks and Gamers. Shout out to him. Yellow Flash. Shout out to Yellow Flash and Tim Cast. I haven't actually watched Tim Cast, but I know he's another YouTuber, I guess, in our community. So shout out to him. I haven't watched him, but. <laughs> and then this person says, my theater manager friend called me and told me there's something very interesting. Stop playing the trailer in the background. We're getting copyrighted. He said that for Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, a great many Captain Marvel advance ticket Buyers never showed up to see the movie. 20 or 30 seats were empty at each so showing despite it being sold out. Go away. I'm so tired of these pop-ups of these articles, by the way. <laughs> see, the manager claimed he'd never seen it like this uh, in more than 20 years. Hundreds and hundreds of tickets were purchased online, but the buyers never arrived to watch them. Uh, AFIC, the box office totals for Captain Marvel are fake, with Disney or a partner padding the numbers. 
I went Thursday night and the theater was a little over half full. I went Thursday night and it was only about half full myself on opening night, like the preview night. It was only about half full. To be fair, they did have Captain Marvel staggered pretty much every 15 minutes. You were not going to be turned away from this movie. It's kind of like how Nintendo ships like 5,000 copies of any given game to, to like Walmart. So you're never going to have have any any sort of opportunity to not buy the game like like especially like a Pokemon or a Mario or something that is kind of what what they're doing with Captain Marvel in my opinion is that they're just making it so available here's my local theater on Friday night 10 20 before Captain Marvel showing wow empty <laughs> So we spoke to a movie theater manager who asked for anonymity. He told us that exactly 25 no-shows for every showing of Captain Marvel on Thursday through Saturday. The manager told us this is definitely abnormal. It's definitely not normal, he says, that people usually show up when they pay for tickets. I'm not sure what it is. We've seen big groups not show up before, but they get refunds. There's the thing. And this doesn't help the movie theaters at all because the movie theaters aren't seeing shit for their ticket sales. They make money and that's why popcorn's like $30 a bucket and that's why, why drinks are like 15 I know I'm exaggerating, but still, that is how they make their money is on the drink sales, right? It doesn't help the movie theaters at all. It'll probably hurt the movie theaters in the long run to have these, these movies showing where nobody's going in to watch them. Oh, the manager would add, I would say someone trying to make the ticket sales look better than they really are. But that's, of course, speculation. We, we don't know. And, and that's all I'm doing is speculating. I'm just kind of giving you all the evidence I'm digging because this is kind of when when I make a decision about something, it's usually because I've done a lot of research. I've weighed both sides and I know a good thing about things. I know common sense. I know how payola used to work in the radio industry and don't think that buzzola isn't a thing that worked either. If you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm a huge wild guitar fan. And this is exactly the type of a plot of a movie that we saw from like the 1960s with Arch Hall Jr. in it, where basically they, they had this pop star and they decided to buy, like basically they, they hired people to be his fan club presidents. They hired people to start fads and trends. They hired people to promote his stuff. You know, they're like, oh, his name's Bud Eagle. Go around wearing eagle feathers in your hair. You know, it's, it's, it's all the same sort of thing. It's marketing. It is marketing 101. They, they needed this movie to be a hit. So they're doing everything in their power to convince the public and their stockholders that this movie is a hit, in my opinion. And then hello, all you Captain Marvel, uh, Disney shills and employees from uh, PR firms that are out here in the comments section. Just if, if you're if you're there to insult my, my audience, you can disagree with me. But once you start name calling, you're getting deleted, by the way. Don't insult my viewers. Don't insult me. Just just saying, just saying. <laughs> he would also indicate he saw significant drop offs in the ticket sales Sunday at his theater Sunday for Captain Marvel. He wasn't he wasn't good. And Monday or Mar Sunday for Captain Marvel wasn't good. And Monday and Tuesday were terrible. They were like a 75% drop off from Sunday, which we already are, are seeing. Box Office Mojo reports Captain Marvel Sunday take was only 38 million at the domestic, a, a drop of over 26% from Saturday. On Monday, the decline was even worse. The film dropped nearly 72%. That's bringing in less than 11 million, putting the gross total of 164 so far. And here's the other thing they're doing. They're, they're including all of the, the domestic and foreign box office totals. They released it the same day, which never happens, just to get the biggest number they could possibly get for this movie. Captain Marvel has been mirrored in controversy. One America's News Network called for fans to avoid seeing Captain Marvel. Instead, see Alita Battle Angel following Brie Larson's comments, insinuating she wanted less white men covering her press tour and reviewing the movie. Yeah, sure, that's fair. Now, now of course, there, there's a few <laughs> other things are adding to this. Like, there's a couple other things adding to this. Let's make me smaller so I can show you this. I don't just say it's fishy, but when you have so many things on top of that, you're having reports of empty theaters, you're having reports of people buying online. Rotten Tomatoes explains why it removed thousands of audience reviews on Captain Marvel's opening day. They're, they're, they're censoring people from putting their opinion out there, right? These are just people saying, hey, what's going on? This movie doesn't look very good, right? And, and, and they... Oh, so, so they did that. Not only that, not only that, the other, the other thing that's piling onto this, YouTube tweaks algorithm to combat quote unquote trolls. And this is what the media does. They like to demonize anybody who disagrees with them by calling them trolls. 
for attacking Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. Suck a dick, Rogue Hollywood. They're kind of a shit one anyway. The point is, that, like, the, the whole point of this video is that there's so many things piling on top of the controversy of this movie. They're doing whatever they can to distract the normies to to kind of, it's, it's, it's the Chewbacca defense, right? Look at the monkey, right? <laughs> That's all this is. They're like, oh, 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 Captain Marvel's not doing it. Um, Avengers trailer. Here's an Avengers trailer for you. Okay, that's stupid. You got fucking Captain Marvel in there. Um, 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 oh shit. James Gunn's back. You guys like James Gunn, right? But he's a pedophile, says a lot of people, blah, 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 blah. Disney, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, seriously, what are you doing? You are not making yourselves look credible or you know and, and this is just me this is what this this is why my opinion seems to be it seems to lead towards disney might possibly be faking this stuff right they might be faking the numbers they might be buying their own damn tickets they might have like companies on top of other companies on top of other companies they, they're, there's a great i want to i want to go off on a tangent for a second here um if anybody watched the dick van dyke show there's a great episode of the dick van dyke show where the the three writers for the alan brady show like, it's basically about a writer's room for a tv show three writers for the alan brady show on this show wanted a raise right you you have rob the head writer and then you have buddy and sally who are like the 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 employees the the staff right well, Buddy and Sally wanted raises. What happens was Rob got paid out of a different bucket in the different production company than Buddy and Sally. So Rob got a raise and Buddy and Sally didn't. But then they had to shuffle the, the money around so that Buddy and Sally could get a raise because all of these companies have sub companies and other companies, right? And they're like, oh yeah, we have this company that produces coloring books that aren't selling very well. And we have this one that's producing flowers and it's not doing very well. But this company is doing great. So we'll just have you paid from this company. And that is what I think might possibly be happening as well with this with this sort of thing. They might have all these sub companies out there on behalf of Disney that might have investments in this to go around in their best interest to buy these tickets. I know my theater was half empty. What, what about you guys? Did you see Captain Marvel? Did you skip it? Did you just go see Alita instead? I know my theater was half, em half empty on opening night and from talking to people, local businesses, local stuff, nobody's interested in this. You know, I, I could go into like a GameStop and people aren't interested in Captain Marvel. <laughs> people don't care about this character. People don't care about this character. She's not that interesting. She's a fucking Mary Sue. <sighs> so <laughs> tell me what you guys think. <laughs> Am I, am I completely off the mark here? Are you guys starting to question and wonder? Because I'm certainly questioning. And I think it's very, very likely that that's what they're doing. I would not be surprised if they if they got busted for it. But they're also kind of too big to get busted. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I will see you on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye!